Hello, Akron fans! This is Shadow333 bringing you another exhibition match. The time we're going on K4 Shrine between J Raccoon and Xenomorph. Now, Xenomorph is a new player, so the name is not familiar. That's why. J Raccoon, however, should be familiar to anyone who's watched the show before because he comes up a lot. Very experienced player, very long time player, while Xenomorph is quite new. J Raccoon's going for. Krekum in the northeast corner of the map. Xenomorph is going for a CISO in the southeast corner of the map. This is K4 Shrine, which hasn't actually been featured on here in a little while, so I'll go over it briefly. Star points are in the corners. There's expansions in between all the star points, small expansions, larger in the center, smaller on the edge, and a few liquid crystal crates in the center of the map. Fairly basic, but not a bad map. Good four player map. It's, well, it's meant for four star points of two players, primarily. You can play as a four player if a fan. It works pretty well, but it's also meant to work well with two player, and we will see how that works now. So Xenomorph going very quickly for fairly economic, well, balanced star, but probably economically focused. Jerrican, on the other hand, going for a very quick set of octos, going towards the southwest side of the map, trying to figure out if Xenomorph is there. Xenomorph, of course, not there, but particularly aggressive. I'm actually a little bit surprised that Jericoon is focused entirely on that one star point rather than spreading his octos between them and then going back in time and changing the path of all the octos to where his opponent turns out to be. A little bit of an odd way of doing it. I mean, if it was cross... If he was actually in cross positions, this would be extremely powerful because it wouldn't be expected. But given that it's close positions, I don't... Well, and Jericoon's not actually even going for that. Nothing's going to come of this. On the other hand, Xenomorph is going to see that Jericoon has almost nothing in his base. I don't know if Xenomorph is going to clue in that Jericoon sent out a bunch of Octos. Though, Jericoon likely won't be keeping those Octos sent out for a long time. And Jericoon actually going back to the 42 second mark, and it looks like those Octos are in fact going straight... So, well, they, there they are, going straight south. Towards Xenomorph's base, very quickly attacking. I'm... That's where I how quickly he is attacking. I guess these. this is not the first game that Xenomorph has had, not the first game between Jericoon and Xenomorph, so I'm guessing that Xenomorph turned out to be fairly good, and Jericoon's trying to get an early start. So we won't even consider Xenomorph a new player right now. Apparently he's good enough that Jericoon feels comfortable going for an Octo Rush on him. Either that or Jericoon's being a big jerk, but I think Jericoon knows what he's doing. And Xenomorph, on the other hand, did go for a scouting rush with the special loss, nothing unusual. He is going for a few... Actually, he's going for another armory, so that's a little bit unusual. He could be going for an infantry rush. Two importers and a second armory isn't unusual for an infantry attack, but... Infantry... Are, I'm still not confident in how they, well they pan out. I mean, Cybernetic Pony has been doing some very interesting strategies with infantry as CISO. But that was three importers. I mean, we saw four importers in the last game that I cast, but apparently the optimal build is three importers and two resource processors, and just pump out infantry. Which makes sense. But Xenomorph is not doing that. Xenomorph, however, was going for a second armory. I don't know if he's going to change that up to a factory or not. And Jericoon looks like he is changing everything up. He was not committing to that rush, which is good, really. Otherwise, he'd have won right then and there from the looks of it. No, he's playing a bit nice. He is keeping his Octos in his base, going for economy instead of going for a massive Octo rush that he had gone for. So Xenomorph hasn't seen this echo out yet. As far as Xenomorph is concerned, that Octorush is still incoming. But once this blue time comes along, everything will change up, and Jericoon will be having the strategy that we all see that he has. And here they come, the Octos, and the last chance they have, and for some reason, the Reza Frosts are moving in. Not sure what happened there. But that Octo attack is being echoed out. Jericoon no longer going for that. Going instead for economy, getting... He does have enough Q Plasma for an Octopods, that's probably what he's going to be building next. Though I don't anticipate that Xenomorph is going to be attacking that soon. Xenomorph appears to be focused entirely on economy, and I'm still not sure what that resource processor was doing. That's really bizarre. Resource processor has typically not moved like that, but it could have been a mistake. It's not. It's possible it's an honest mistake. He selected the wrong unit and just had to happen to move it. I mean, it's possible. Not possible with another unit, but definitely possible on its own to just have it selected and then accidentally right-click or something. Although I think you actually have to tell it to relocate in order to get it to move. Regardless, Xenomorph going for economy, Jericoon going instead for... No, not instead, he also going for economy. And 
no Octopod yet, so he's not at all concerned about Xenomorph attacking him, and nor should he be. Xenomorph now at the 330 mark, getting a couple importers and an armory. Well, second armory, rather. Not going for a factory, this is where I think that he is he is actually a new player, because typically new players will go for armories. It's it's there, and they know that it's a building they can build. Although, actually, no, you know what? Three importers and two armories, he could be going for a legitimate infantry rush. This... This, no, four importers, yeah, he's actually going for a legitimate hardcore infantry rush. This is not just being new player, he is he is going for it. While Jay Raccoon will not be that prepared for it, he has a, reef, well, a couple reefs up, but no Octopod. Getting advanced structures, and that will give him some air units, which of course will help out. But given that Special Ops are detectors, okay, there's the first Octopod at the 530 mark. Given that Special Ops are detectors, Farpods aren't going to be a big deal. Okay, seven importers is a little bit much, but... That will work. I see Xenomorph is building up a lot of infantry, and as long as he hierarchies them well, he will be able to pull this, or he should be able to at least have a chance pulling this off. I don't think a direct assault is going to be particularly effective, although if he does go around from the side, K4 Shrine is set up nicely to allow for a lot of paths into the main base, so I could see him going along the side and attacking the Spire if he scouts that out. Though I don't see any units coming in to scout that out, so I doubt he's going for that. And a third armor coming in, Yep, Xenomorph is committed to this, he has hierarchied everything to one marine, and he probably should actually get a few levels of hierarchy just because infantry die quickly. But still, he does have everything hierarchied up properly, he has everything coming out, all of his armories building up, he is committed, he is focused on this rush, and an Octopod coming in to try to stop it will be blocked off by the importers, and Xenomorph moving up to defend, the Octopod actually a little bit behind at the 630 mark, it started to attack about 20 seconds in the future, the infantry will be able to intercept it, and they will win. They will win handily. However, Jericho at this point in time, the 729 market, building up a Faropod. Not much else, though. He actually doesn't have a lot of money in the bank. Xenomorph has a ton of cash in the bank. Having spent all of his money on infantry and not really needing to, building another armory still, he probably should transition to a factory at this point. I can say that he has focused heavily on infantry, but he has so much money to spend, he can easily transition to infantry. Sorry, to. not infantry, to factory. Though. Another idea would be to get ground units. A really good idea, if he's going to focus on this, is to get the ground units upgrade since that improves marine weaponry. That would make this attack extremely powerful. As in, he might win the game with it, or close to it. While J Raccoon, at the 502 mark, jumping back here, double checking when his research has started, and undoing it. Interesting, he's undoing this research, probably going to go just for a mass octopod build, rather than trying to get pharopods. Good idea if he does that, but he'll need quite a few Octopods to fend off all these infantry coming in. This is at 746 mark. We jumped forward two minutes when I switched players there. So the 749 mark, Xenomorph's massive infantry army is moving in, and they will encounter this Faropod here, which will be going down ex Actually, should have gone down fairly quickly. The Special Ops will take it out. Going down with no losses. No losses experienced by Xenomorph getting rid of that Faropod. I can see why Jericoon switched his strategy over to Mass Octopod. Or presumably Mass Octopod. Because he's not going to be able to win with Firepods against this infantry build. This is insane. I mean, it's working too. It's just, this is a very powerful build. As long as Xenomorph does transition away from it, possibly into Macroplasma. I mean, at this point he has enough Q-Plasma to transition into Macrofab if he wanted to. If he wanted to have either Frigate support against Air if he needs it, or just Twinmar support to finish this off, and Mass Infantry comes in, and then Twinmar bring up the, just bring up the rear tearing everything else apart. And getting advanced structures, so getting machinery. Not sure if he's how he's planning on building off that. If he's planning on getting heavy cruisers, maybe. Or MF... No, MFBs is unlikely, but machinery doesn't help a pure infantry strategy. Ground units do. There we go. There's ground units. Xenomorph is getting ground units. I guess he must have intended to do that and messed up. Misclicked. But he does have the correct research this time around. And these marines coming in should be able to tear apart Jericoon's base. However, Jericoon is about... Two minutes down from here, and we do see that a lot of damage is being dealt at J Raccoon's base. Xenomorph, from his point of view, will win, and J Raccoon does have an Octopod set up. He has Faro set up as well, just trying to get himself his defenses set up so he has a nice little wall here between units and reefs so that nothing gets killed, nothing gets through. But even with that, all the infantry coming in from Xenomorph is probably going to break through this regardless. He needs. Getting more Octopods, but he still needs more Octopods yet. Probably five or six Octopods to fend off all of these infantry coming in. This is a really 
this is surprisingly powerful. So we see that infantry is actually not as useless as has been claimed. Infantry in large groups can work out, and it's just this sort of large group you don't usually see, which definitely is a surprise, and I can see how Xenomorph is winning by the by that surprise. Though Jericho does have plenty of time to prepare, the attack is still coming in, it still looks to be dealing a lot of damage despite Jericho's changes. But we are seeing his point of view, the 850 mark, or the, sure, the 9 minute mark, coming in, one Octopod going down with no losses, another Octopod, actually, now he does have the 5 or 6 Octopods in the back with reef support, so it will be a lot harder this time around for Xenomorph's units to get in, and it looks like Xenomorph on this timeline is going to be taking a lot more damage. And this Arcticus getting in the way, the Arcticus tanking a lot of fire, but unfortunately the unit is moving in front, not letting the Arcticus tank everything for them. Losing an Octopod, losing another Faro, most of the infantry are going down, another Octopod gone down as well, but now the infantry are too thin to get rid of many more Octopods. One more Octopod goes down, and that's it. So half the Octopods destroyed for all the infantry, but at the same time, Xenomorph has been rebuilding this entire infantry army, which is actually really nicely done, because Jericho's going for a counterattack, being baited into a counterattack. Xenomorph will be able to tear this to shreds without any issue. And Xenomorph has tons of cash, and at the 903 mark is building up ground units, but this attack coming in, actually surprisingly not... No, he really should go for that attack. In fact, I think Jericho will be wisening up to the fact that the attack is no longer happening and not send his Octopods in because at this point, if he sends his Octopods in, they will be torn to shreds by both infantry armies. Though even then, with the single infantry army inside Xenomorph's main base, it's going to be too much. Now Jericho, 1020 mark, still moving forward with his Octopods, still getting advanced structures, so he will get air units afterwards. But the Octopods coming in here and Xenomorph, his units aren't quite in position to deal with the Octopods, but the fact that it is Defender's Advantage, though the infantry that he does have, it's going to be a matter of whether or not Xenomorph takes control of the situation and pushes forward with the infantry that he has. And given that he moved his army back from before, he actually will have a slightly better chance if Jericoon continues. The only thing I was worried about with, with Xenomorph retreating his army is that Jericoon might not go for this and might not fall into the trap. Though I'm not sure if Xenomorph quite realizes how much of a trap he's set, and he's not quite taking advantage of this fact. No, he is moving forward now, but... Still not quite got enough units in, not enough units hierarchied up either. And regardless, he is still tearing apart Jericoon's forces. Jericoon jumping back to the Impeccable Pass realizes that he doesn't actually have to attack like this. No, never mind, he's not realizing nothing. He's going for a Chronoport instead. While this is actually a terrible idea, he's getting flanked in the process, though it might still be fairly powerful. It will get rid of a lot of the infantry that were here, but. Given that so many more infantry are being produced in the process, this flanking assault, is, or this flank coming in here, is going to tear apart the units, the Octopods here that are chronoported back and damaging the base, and I don't think Xenomorph really lost a lot of production potential from that. I mean, yes, he did need those armed his importers, but probably not all of them. Unfortunately, Xenomorph not actually flanking. Those units were moving back, not attack moving back. Xenomorph should go back here and try to attack move them, or at least get in a position where he can control them to get them to attack instead of move, but... No, that flank did not actually turn out. I think Xenomorph might have everything turn around for him at this point. Although, given the fact that he does have a nice SimCity, the Octos still can't get through. The Octopods doing what they can, but in the meantime, more infantry are being produced. Unfortunately, they were not hierarchy to anything. None of the armories were rallied to a, sing to a single unit. So all the units coming out here for Xenomorph getting destroyed, coming out one by one. And I think Xenomorph has lost his game. Very promising opening, but unfortunately, he did not take advantage of the flank there. Not means prepare to flank in case that happened, and in case this front report happened, I mean, hard to predict, but still. And did not have the hierarchy set up properly, but still, very, very nice shot there. Almost got it. I am pleasantly surprised to see this. I, I really like. I like to see when unconventional strategies at least almost work, and especially when they do work, it's very entertaining. But even when they almost work like this, it's still quite interesting. It looks like, actually, no, something has changed. The Chronoport, the feedback loop is changing. Some of the units that were further in the future not being Chronoported back, so these Octopods are actually not dead. There actually is a chance for the infantry still. Xenomorph has not lost the game yet. He did manage to get rid of some of the Octopods further in the future, so you were Chronoported back. Now, now his infantry are still poorly hierarchy, which means they are still going to all their deaths, but taking out more and more Octopods in this iteration actually will give him a nice chance. He'll still need to build up more, and he needs to put these armories 
or have these armies go to a hierarchy. Get them onto a unit, hierarchy to that. But at least he's got something going with this. And the 1056 mark further. Now, this is the same attack we saw before. Nothing's really changed here. Jericho further in the future, the 1329 mark. Pushing in strongly. I think this is still going to be it. Xenomorph did get a second win there, but wasn't quite enough. And Jericho chronoporting back a few more Octopods to finish this off. I mean, nice going, trying to get Gate Tech, though. Jericho is expanding towards the northwest side of the map. Not a huge deal, really. Economy is not the big question here. The question is that Xenomorph simply didn't have their units. If you had a factory, that would help a lot, too, just because he'd have the mech to actually take advantage of Gate Tech, because right now Gate Tech is totally useless. He needs that mech, he needs a factory to build the mech to build the Chrono Porter Gates, or any gates. But, there he goes, there's that factory. However, Jericoon pretty much moving in. Actually, you know what? He may pull back slightly. In fact, it looks like Jericoon's forces were destroyed, ultimately. Yeah, ultimately, the... It did not work out for him. Or... Barely. Let me think. From Jericho's point of view, we do see a couple Octopods. They're dealing a lot of damage, and Xenomorph... No, Xenomorph is actually playing an Echo. He is not doing that well at all. Jericho sees what's actually happening and is going to win this game. So, 11.25 mark, we see that there is enough damage being dealt that that's going to be the game. And Xenomorph... Well, probably will, despite his comments, will probably resign pretty soon. Once he's in his base, has been completely destroyed, and there's not much he can do about it. So, my only suggestion would have been to either go for the infantry rush a lot sooner, like three importer, two RP, and just push, or switch to factory around the five or six minute marker. When doing that first infantry push, switch to factory, and. Or possibly even macrofab, just. Well, factory, then macrofab, and then from there. Twinmar support, or even heavy cruiser support, wouldn't have been terrible if you had machinery. I mean, it's expensive, yes, but Octopods, three or four heavy cruisers against the Octopods probably would have won. Although Twinmars would have also won, so either way, Macrofab would have been a good transition point, I would think. Regardless, Jericoon did win this game, and exciting game it was. So I hope you enjoyed that, and Xenomorph, I'm sure, will be resigning fairly soon. Once that happens, we'll move on to the next game. soon as Xenomorph decides. There we go. There's that resignation, and that is the game. We'll be back shortly with another match. So, stay tuned. And there we go.